Check Podcasts. Hi, I'm Bruce Williams. Welcome to Chamber Chats. I am the CEO of the Greater Victoria Chamber of Commerce. And we do Chamber Chats, as always, here in the podcasting studio at Check Media Group, one of our Chamber champions. Podcasts are made possible by the support of Island Savings, a division of First West Credit Union, who have a team of professionals with solutions as unique as your business. And I would like, as always, to acknowledge that I live and work, and we are currently located in the ancestral territory of the lekwungen speaking nations known to us as Songhees and Esquimalt Nation. There was a time when that acknowledgement would not have happened. As you know, historically, in our culture, we've moved toward that as a step in reconciliation. We're going to talk today about the fact that this chamber, of which I am the CEO, is 160 years old. We've been celebrating that all year long since the anniversary of of the creation back on February 9th. And that 160 years makes us the oldest Chamber of Commerce or Board of Trade in Western Canada. So we thought celebrating 160 years would be a really good thing to do. And part of it is the creation of a link through our chamber website, which is victoriachamber.ca. We're going to talk today with a couple of people who put together that website and that link for us. Uh, Jim Zeben, familiar to many of you. He's our Senior Manager of Policy and Strategic Communication at the Chamber. Jim, how are you? I'm great, Bruce. Thanks for the opportunity. Good. You're at your world headquarters in Saanich, I see, today for this podcast. The other person involved in this was a co-op student from the University of Victoria at the Chamber. We are huge believers in co-op, as you know. Leanne Wu is the young woman that helped us do that. Hi, Leanne. How are you? Hi, doing well. Thank you very much. Good. Nice to see you again. So can you just give us a general outline, Leanne? I'll start with you. What what was the work that you did to create this website and this link for us? Absolutely. So um, basically, we started looking at all of the research that the Chamber has already done. I believe the Chamber has done a couple of historical projects over the years, which was a great help for me. Uh, not being a professional researcher historian, it was great to work off some of the existing chamber records that we had. And we wanted to focus on what the chamber had done in the past, as well as what are some of the things that the chamber is doing in the future and looking towards the future aspect of it too. Yeah. So Jim, at the same time, you were doing some work for input as well. Tell me about the stuff that you did. Yeah, for sure. I think um, after we found Leanne, we were really w- lucky to find somebody with her credentials and and her background. And uh, uh, so she was, you know, the, it really helped make the project successful. But I, I think what we we sort of decided on a structure, we kind of came up with the pillars of, of of the content that we were looking for to try to tell that story of 160 years. And then basically just let Leanne loose and said, here, go find out uh, to go check out all the archives. Uh, figure out where to look, and and uh, from her experience and her uh, her schooling, she did such a great job of just filling up all of the those places that uh, that we had identified in the structure of how to tell the story, and so that's kind of what you see on the website. So tell me, Leanne, about ac- accessing those archives and play, where did, where were they? And what was in them? What did you see? What did you find? Definitely. So the chamber actually had a lot of the. Um, information located in the office, Um, but some other particular sources that were really important to the research was firstly the annual reports. Um, So the chamber in its history had published annual reports uh, throughout the years, and so those were a great treasure trove of um, things that the chamber did, uh, the member lists, even things like shipping information. So that was really exciting to find. Um, And another source was actually newspapers. So I believe the University of Victoria did some work with Times Columnist and they had uh, digitized a lot of their uh, archived newspaper articles. And so that was another great place to find things like advertisements from the founding members, an actual advertisement of the founding of the chamber we found there too. So those were two uh, places where we got a lot of information from. Yeah, February 9th, 1863 was the day that the chamber first convened. And and I've said this a number of times in public, but to put that in perspective, that was one month after Abraham Lincoln had signed the the, uh, the, uh, Emancipation Proclamation in the United States. So to frame that in historical terms, that's what it was. Jim, we we sourced as well the original handwritten minutes and notes from that first chamber meeting too, didn't we? Yeah, you know, and Leanne was saying a lot of it was uh, published. It was kind of big news at the time, as you can imagine, a, a community, Victoria wasn't that big. And so when all the merchants in town decided to come together and, and uh, bring the, entity, the chamber entity to this region, it was it was covered. And uh, so the minutes were covered. Uh, the people that were there was was included in the newspaper. So 
you know, looking back, it was such a great source for us to kind of to to have that sort of firsthand account of what was happening. Really cool. Yeah, we um, we also made note of the fact that in those notes from the first meeting, it, it said that this meeting was being convened in Victoria, Vancouver Island. But because it was 1863, there was no British Columbia. In fact, there was no Canada at that time. Uh, and Jim, I'll stick with you for a second. We did some research as well, and you did on the history of the Chambers of Commerce in Canada. First one was Halifax, correct? Yeah, yeah. The first one in Canada was Halifax, you know, the Chamber Movement. And this is something I didn't know. Like I, when I was first back in 2019, when I first was asked to kind of join the Chamber team, I was, I wasn't really sure what the Chamber did. And uh, I think a lot of people are like that, you know, is it uh, just, do we just get together uh, and um, hand out business cards? And so after joining the Chamber and getting involved in the advocacy and learning about this history and then learning about the Chamber Movement, um, it's been pretty amazing. The first chamber started in 1599, I believe. Leanne might correct me on that one, but it was in Marseille, France. And, and it, it's kind of a romantic history in that um, they weren't handing out business cards back then. They were they were worried about pirates in the Mediterranean Sea. And so they wanted to make sure that the, the shipping was secure. Uh, and so they, they got together and they, you know, the voice of business, which we still are today, uh, was able to get the resources needed to make sure that um, Though there was patrols and that uh, the shipping was secure, so so you know it's kind of what uh, the, the Victoria Chamber, how the Victoria Chamber was founded as well. It's it's pretty interesting history. Yeah, the chamber, of course, was founded within the colonial culture of Canada and the settlement that happened here in uh, Halifax, Nova Scotia, being one of the first areas colonized by Europeans when they came here. So that's a bit of the history of the evolution of that. But yeah, Western Canada entered into confederation later than the rest of Canada, and for that reason, it wasn't until 1863 that we became the first one. Uh, in Canada. Leanne, you had mentioned to me before we started, too, that you weren't 100% sure on what the Chamber does either. So doing this research, research rather, has helped you understand that, that a bit better, too, right? Absolutely, yes. Uh, I think I'd only heard about the Chamber in slight passing, but I think one of the big things that I pulled away from this project and learning what Chambers does is really connecting people and connecting communities to together and being able to create uh, a voice that represents as many people as they can now and really moving forward to for, for the best of everyone, both in, you know, commerce sense and finance sense, but community as well. Yeah, we, we do more than just hand out business cards and have social events, but we do that, but that creates business to business connections. We advocate to government things in the best interest of, of business, and, and that's just a small part of what we do, and some reconciliation work we've done as well. But we're celebrating today and talking about the 160 years of the Greater Victoria Chamber of Commerce. Next, I want to talk about the Victoria of 1863. Today on Chamber Chats, we're talking about our, our history of 160 years within the Greater Victoria Chamber of Commerce. A couple of people that worked on the creation of the link on our website for that. Jim Zeben is our Senior Manager of Policy and Strategic Communications. And uh, Leanne Wood was, uh, uh, sorry, Leanne Wu was a co-op student from UVic who came in to help us with that work. So Leanne, I'm going to start with you. As you started to look back historically, what was your impression of Victoria in 1863? I think uh, we were able to find some great photos from that period, or at least drawings, and it really did not look like much. <laughs> a lot of wood buildings, definitely not as busy or as uh, populous as, as you know Victoria today. Um, and I think when I was finding all these photos and information, it really started off with the, uh, with the gold rush. So things were pretty quiet until then. Yeah. And Jim, what was your impression of Victoria in 1863? Not, not even comparison, uh, comparing it rather to today, because there really is no comparison. But tell me about your impressions of 1863 Victoria. Yeah, I, I think, you know, one of the things that we really learned was that uh, the records of the time didn't tell a full story. They, they, they did tell the settler story. They, and, and you can understand there's a limited uh, ability to share information at that time. So these were people that came here that were settling that were trying to organize the land in the way they knew how. Um, and, uh, you know, a, a lot of unfortunate things happened. To the, and um, we've had a lot of learning since that. But I think that was a, a really big learning for me. And I think for our team was that uh, we had to look beyond just what some of those archival records were, because um, there were other stories. You know, it wasn't just the kind of Anglo-American uh, settlers that had come here or the, the Western Europeans. There, there were people 
um, other other communities that were here and all through the decades that were coming here. And maybe their stories weren't being told as much. Um, and, I, and I think that really uh, uh, started, you know, back in the 1860s. You know, as you mentioned, Canada was wasn't even uh, formed yet, so it wasn't uh, we we hadn't gone through Confederation. So um, Greater Victoria Chamber of Commerce was the Western Canadian Chamber. So uh, the, the work we were doing affected people in Manitoba, um, across the prairies, and out here. And it was and it was really kind of connecting um, our part of this little part of the world with the British Empire and the American uh, American um, Empire, I guess, if you will, American. Republic. Yeah, there's been great things done by the chamber through its history, but there there have been some problems. We were a systemically racist culture for a long time. That's what came with colonialism when it happened here. Uh, one of the things, Leanne, that you actually brought to me was concerning um, a public apology being issued by the school district in the city of Victoria on Labor Day of 2022. But you discovered something else about that. Do you remember what that was? Yeah, so I think it was a bit of a disappointment for everyone to find out, but the chamber was... Uh, unfortunately supportive of segregation in schools between um, Chinese residents in Victoria and non-Chinese residents. So uh, when I found that out, I knew immediately we had to let everyone know. <laughs> and yeah. so we brought it up and made sure that we were being clear that um, this is definitely not something we support now or we should have ever supported. So. Yeah, that was 100 years ago. And uh, yeah. we, we actually, in a previous chamber chat, we spoke with some folks from the, the uh, Chinatown Museum and brought that up. So on that day, when the city and the school district are going to apologize for segregating the students, I stood up first and said, actually, they did that because the chamber told them to. Uh, they had been approached by saying that the, these Chinese businesses are they're making too much money. They're taking business away from, from the rest of us. What can we do about it? And the chamber had three unfortunate recommendations. One was to segregate their students to deprive them of education. The second was to deny them the right to own property. And the third was to cease immigration immediately. So that was a very dark time, uh, but we publicly acknowledged that and we apologize for that. So as we've moved along with the history of this place, we've seen a whole bunch of things change. Jim, what sort of pivotal things have you seen change even since the turn of the last century from 1900 forward? Oh, you know, a tr tremendous amount of things. Um, just with... Uh, the, the changing economy. And, and I think, um, you know, you go through the First World War, the Second World War, the role of the chamber. I was, uh, you know, during wartime, the chamber would do things like, um, uh, you know, work to memorialize uh, uh, fallen soldiers. Um, and, and during the Depression, there was, a, there was a, a movement that the chamber started to hire people just to do work around the house. So people that still had some means uh, we're, we're trying, you know, there, there was a, there was a push to, to get them to hire people who were unemployed to, you know, help out to do maybe paint your house, even if it didn't need to be painted, um, and just to, just to get through. And I see that as being something that's part of the chamber DNA. So, you know, the 1960s was sort of a pivotal decade for uh, changing the way that government and society thought about uh, our country. And uh, the first multicultural policy, I think, in the world was adopted by Canada back in the early 70s. And that uh, basically was just a, a, an acknowledgement that our society and our, our country had communities that weren't part of the conversation, that weren't part of the dialogue before. And so um, we're now being brought in and being and so ideas around language and, and different culture and being allowed to keep your culture or or not be ashamed of your culture. More importantly, I think um, those are things that uh, changed us. Uh, Canada changed society, changed BC, and changed the chamber. Yeah, I mean, we are all children of immigrants in this country, except for those who are Indigenous, that's for sure. Leanne, what sort of things did you see that you saw sort of an evolution of culture, uh, maybe as it matched what was going on in society in general? Absolutely. I mean, I think Jim touched a lot about the changes culturally in the chamber. Um, in the beginning, there was very, it was not very diverse group of people, I believe. Um, but I think moving forwards here that we can see today, there's just been so many different communities that have come together and built up Victoria and built up the Vancouver Island as we know it today, and as well as built up the chamber. So not only different people, but different industries as well. We can see coming into Victoria um, technology, for example, we've used um, so many different tools nowadays. I think a funny story I, I rec rem remember uh, 
reading was we got our first computer, the chamber got its first computer in 1980, and then it took about 10 years for more than one person to know how to use it. So it's definitely gone through a lot of changes, a lot of development, and and definitely we're looking, I'm looking forward to it personally to see how the chamber continues moving into the future and, and what uh, more actions it takes. Yeah, for sure. Okay, we did something in the Greater Victoria Chamber of Commerce in 1972 that changed the entire chamber world across Canada. We're going to talk about that next. We're talking today about the Victoria Greater Victoria Chamber of Commerce 160th anniversary year that we're celebrating right now. Uh, Jim Zeban is with us. He is our Senior Manager of Policy and Strategic Communication. And Leanne Wu was a co-op student from UVic, UVic rather, who helped us put us all together. 1972... The Greater Victoria Chamber of Commerce became the first chamber in Canada to have a woman as its board chair, a woman named Helen, Be Helen, Helen Beerness, rather, who we put into the Business Hall of Fame this past year. Um, there's a bunch of characters, like some interesting people all through the years. Leanne, tell me about some of the fun people that you learned about when you were doing your reading. Uh, yes, there was a lot of different people who contributed to the chamber over the years. Um, but definitely, I think Helen Beers was the person who made the most uh, impact on me personally. She was incredibly community driven. She was worked with multiple charities and multiple boards across the city. Um, when she was a chamber chair, she was, as you said, one of the first women to do that. So I can only imagine what she had to go through and the things she had to navigate. Um, she was definitely focused on tourism when I, uh, during her time at the chamber. Um, traveling across Canada, promoting the chamber and, and tourism to Victoria. So, yeah, definitely a, a big role model to to look up to. Yeah, that's only 50 years ago that a woman finally became the board president or board chair. Any other characters stick out in your mind, Jim, people that were a part of our illustrious history? Um, well, I think, um, you know, there's there's a few, some of the early ones for sure, some of the, uh, the pioneer uh, uh, uh board members. Uh, some of them had kind of dark histories and dark stories, but um, I, I think at some point, like we're looking back at this, the the content that we were able to come up with. And if you go into and you, you take a look at some of those stories, like I can see a Netflix TV series or, or a, a show being made, uh, you know, as people are, as Canadians um, kind of does want to learn more about uh, our own country and our, and our places and, and, you know, being the first chamber in Western Canada and, and all of those those crazy stories that we were uh, a party to, for sure. Yeah, and I'll stick with you for a second too, Jim, because when, when you go to the website, it breaks it down by decade, and it also breaks it down by cultural organizations too. Tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, so um, again, that was kind of when we were first putting together the site, we sort of did, uh, we came up with a structure to, to help tell the story. And so uh, we didn't want to just go chronologically. So some of the things we did is we looked at significant moments in history. Um, so like the depression, the wars, uh, the internet and, and COVID, you know, we kind of ended with that. That was, a, uh, I think as when we look back, it's going to be a remarkable time for uh, the greater Victoria chamber of commerce, because some of the things we did um, were, were precedent setting across the country. And, and, uh, um, I think we can take a lot of pride of it. Of course, that story is still being written. Um, we're still, we still have a lot of businesses that, uh, we helped to get through a really dark time or a really difficult time, but, uh, um, it's not over. Um, and so we're still working to, to help those businesses, but, um, I, in, in time, I think it's gonna be a really fascinating part of history. Yeah. I mean, you're right about the pivotal role the chamber will have played in the economy through the wars, uh, certainly through the great depression and COVID is right up there. I mean, the last three and a half years have been quite a ride for all of us. Uh, Leanne, when you were doing this, I mean, this was work for you. You were a co-op student. You were working with us, but what did you find fun about this? Like what, what, what was it that really engaged you about doing this work? Uh, I think one of my favorite, well, I, have, I think I have two favorite parts of working with this. One was just seeing um, all the pictures, you know, seeing the change of tiny wooden shacks to concrete buildings, seeing, you know, maybe there was just some, parks here but now there is a whole intersection with everything and you can kind of map out oh this store used to be here and, and that hotel used to be there 
Um, and I think second of all is also working, being able to work with a lot of different communities. Um, I think you touched on a little bit earlier, but we wanted to create an area for stories of business and commerce um, to be present on the site as well. And so we made a special section for communities to, if they want, if they feel comfortable to, to contribute their own stories about their histories in Victoria. Of course, that section is still evolving and still being worked on, but um, I'm excited to see um, how many more uh, interesting stories we can we can learn from them. Yeah, and again, Jim, this is a part of the work that you do as you work with the Chamber, but what was the fun part for you? What, what, what did you take away from that that you thought was really cool? Yeah, yeah, and I think, you know, Leanne touched on it there, and I actually just got an email the other day from a, a community that uh, was interested in contributing um, some more to it, and so that's, you know, so people are still accessing it, and uh, and, and we'll still be updating the content, but but I, I, you know, I just felt really proud that as an organization, we were able to acknowledge and um, tell stories and try to right some wrongs. I think that that was, that, I don't know if that's necessarily fun, but uh, I think it was, it felt good anyways, to be able to, to participate that. And it wasn't just a marketing exercise. Of course, we're hoping that um, more people become aware of the chamber and all the cool things we do, but, but uh, really it was a, uh, um, you know, we came we came at it with the idea of of trying to tell stories, trying to give provide an opportunity for people who didn't get a, a chance to tell their story in the past to tell their story. And I think we're still working on it. It's not perfect, um, but we're trying. And we and I think it, Leanne did a great job. Yeah, and of course, Leanne, as I said, we're big believers in the co op program, both through UVic and Camosun, because we get a great deal from it from the work that you do. What did you take away from this? What was the value to you in doing this? Uh, yeah, I think definitely it was how much uh, communities and people working together can really make some um, positive changes in, in the world and not only business, but like I said, socially, um, the Chandra has a really great area for a really great place for um, the collection of great ideas and and um, movements to, to start as well. So uh, I was really glad to be able to learn that and see all the great teamwork that the Chamber does with everyone. Well, thank you for all the work you did, Leanne. We really appreciate it. We miss you over here, but we wish you all the best in the next steps in your career for sure. Uh, Leanne Wu was a co-op student at UVic who helped us put together the 160 Chamber site. And Jim Zeban is still with us. He is the Senior Manager of Policy and Strategic Communication at the Chamber. And Jim, thanks for all the work that you did on this too. It's quite a story, really. Awesome. Great. Okay, that's how this all goes. I'm Bruce Williams. We'll see you again for another Chamber Chat. <laughs>